So with this, uh, we will go to your second presentation uh, on multi-span lateral slide laboratory investigation. That's also a phase two of uh, uh, phase one project that Dr. Uh, Caitlin Friesman is the PI. And uh, again, thank you for uh, filling in for Dr. Friesman on uh, presenting this project. Sure. So, thank so you. Um, I'm going to step to the side here and, and turn it over to Abdallah Alamari. He's another researcher here at the Bridge Center uh, who's been working on, on this project um, and uh, he's been doing a great job. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to him. Um, here's, here's Abdallah. Hello, this is Abdallah Alamari. So I'm here uh, today to present uh, this presentation about uh, uh, which serves to summarize the update ongoing uh, project of multi-span lateral slide laboratory investigation into its uh, phase number two. And uh, uh, today, um, uh, the summary will be about the updated uh, work uh, about this project and uh, what's the motivation about uh, phase number two and what's uh, the lab uh, work that have been done on, uh, on this project yet. So about the background, so it's known that uh, the lateral slide in bridge construction is like an emerging and accelerated, uh, exciting accelerated bridge construction uh, technique that uh, aims to reduce the um, uh, construction time and uh, traffic inconvenience. And that's by building the bridge uh, superstructure of alignment and then sliding it laterally to its final position. And then after like the completing the sliding process, the closure joint between a superstructure and substructure uh, is often cast to establish a continuity between the two and uh, to create an uh, integral uh, system. And um, usually some like the, the UHBC uh, or ultra high performance concrete with non-contact lab splice rebar is, is using to, to cast the closure joints. Uh, uh, of of the uh, between the superstructure and substructure, and like due to the need of research to search for alternative materials, uh, which gives the same mechanical properties in less time and less cost. So um, ultra high performance concrete, uh, like um, that have been found that sorry uh, hybrid composite synthetic concrete has become known for the previous reasons. And then the HCSC is polymer-based basal fiber reinforced concrete um, offering optimized mechanical effectiveness compatibility with adjacent materials and complete elimination of uh, degradation. Now the objective of this phase number two is like to investigate the performance of the UHBC closure joint between the bridge beer diaphragm and the beer cap with a specific focus on determining when a non-contact lab splice has sufficient strength to either open a bridge to vehicles or to expose it to additional construction loading. As uh, seen uh, below in the figure, it shows a cross-section of the pier diaphragm and you can see the um, UHBC um, fill point through deck and the extended lab uh, rebar uh, splice tree bars which will be simulated in the lab and that will be discussed later in this uh, presentation. So talking about the project plan, uh, the project plan has four tasks. Task number one, the summary of phase one findings and this task like 100% completed. Uh, the work from phase one of, the, of this project uh, was summarized and the resulted or the findings were used to inform the, the final laboratory testing plan. In task number two, laboratory testing, 15% uh, of this task have been completed. And um, the, the focus of, 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 this, of this task is to determine the relationship between the early age uh, UHBC, HCSC uh, strength and lab splice uh, rebar strength. And the, um, about, this, about this task, the laboratory plan uh, was finalized and the specimen construction was uh, started. 
And task number three, summary and recommendations. So the data from task number two will be analyzed and summarized uh, via graphs, uh, tables, uh, pictures, or any other data comparison efforts. And um, it's anticipated that this guidance at the end uh, will include the from enclosure board details and lab splice development timing for UHBC HCSC applications. Uh, up to this point, no work has been performed on this task uh, to this period. And task number four, which is a final report. So at the end, the uh, project findings from the laboratory testing will be uh, will be prepared and included in the final project. Uh, and up to this point, again, no work has been performed on this uh, on this task. So uh, talking about task number one, which is the phase one findings. So uh, as it's known, the uh, the slide in uh, or single span letter slide in uh, adopted by many states uh, and are a common APC method for a construction of bridges when short closure durations are needed. Uh, so the multi-span lateral slide are far less common. And thus a multi-span lateral slide incorporates additional construction complexities that must be considered by designers or agencies or something like that. So the objective of the phase one uh, of this project was to analyze the behavior of abridged elements during multi-span lateral slide efforts to ensure proper performance and expected behavior. So the investigated bridge of phase one was uh, Iowa one uh, bridge over Old Man's Creek located in southwest Iowa, city Iowa. This bridge is 300 feet by 47 feet, steel girder with concrete pier appointment diagram, um, diaphragm bridge with three spans, 90 feet, 120 feet, and 90 feet. Um, the most two important key findings of the phase one was the sliding process of multi-span steel girder with superstructure over the wall pier went smoothly and like no critical concerns were noticed. Uh, the point number two, like no worth, noteworthy or remarkable response from the sub substructure was observed during the slide in and no visible signs of distress like cracking were observed on the beers or even at the bridge deck level. As you can see in the picture here, this is a, a picture of the sliding process of this bridge. Um, the phase two motivation. So uh, although the, the phase one objectives achieved and slide in practice were, worked well, uh, the research or design team questions like they have like they got two questions the first one what can be can the bridge be open for traffic within a short time of period or and the second one is like what is the relationship between the early age time dependent strength of uhbc or uh, or different materials closure uh, joints and thus um, the uh, the research team has been asked by iowa dot to extend the project into its second phase and conduct like in-depth uh, study investigation of lab supply strength development for closure bore applications at, at early age. Uh, for task number two, laboratory testing. So this task, the research team divided it into two stages, pre-lab and lab work. In the pre-lab work, so the research team decided to um, to set four unique um, designs, design number one, two, three, and four. In design number one, the research team used the, the phase one bridge located in Iowa City, Iowa. Uh, the same dimensions, the same parameters, they used that to design number one as a reference for design number one. And for the remaining designs, they used the Grebeel 2014. Uh, which called the design and construction of field cast UHBC connections as a reference to uh, design uh, two, three, and uh, four, uh, as you can see in the figure number one in the slides to the right. Now in each design, 24 samples of non-contact lab splice connections will be tested in pull-out test as shown in figure number two. Um, in design number four, exactly, so 
The UHBC will be replaced by HCSC material, hybrid composite synthetic concrete, uh, and that's uh, that's because uh, the research team need to to know if this material like can be used uh, uh, for alternative uh, for H UHBC with the same mechanical properties uh, in less time and uh, less cost. Um, in all designs, in all our four designs, the different design parameters varying between constant and changeable will be uh, or have been included in those designs. When we say about when we talk about the constant variables, we talk about side cover and bar spacing, which is which is the distance between the two extended uh, bars or the distance between the tested bar and the extended bars and the bar diameter. And uh, changeable variables like embedment length, uh, LD, which is the distance between the top of the UHPC or HCSC strip uh, to the end of the tested bar, and splice length, which is the distance between the end of the this, uh, extended bar and the end of the tested bar. Uh, those uh, variables like all of this have been included in our uh, designs. Now, the most important um, factor in, in our designs, like three samples in each design will be tested at certain time after placement of the uh, UHBC or HCSC. Those times as like six hours, uh, 12 hours, 18 hours, 24 hours, 36 hours, 48 hours, seven days, and 28 uh, days. In the lab work, first stage of the lab work, so uh, a precast concrete slabs forms have been um, uh, the precast concrete slabs have been formed. Those slabs are four feet by four feet by one feet. Uh, those dimensions have been chosen to make sure that the spacing between the extended number six bars and the longitudinal direction is is eight inch or the transverse direction. In the second stage of the lab work, so the the preparing for um, the formwork of the UHBC and HCSC strips. And uh, the UHBC or HCSC strips will, will be cast on the top of the precast slab with a number seven in the center of the strips. So, in, so that means the number seven will be uh, in between, uh, in the middle, vertically between the two number six extended uh, bars. In this slide, you can see the uh, the, the, the precast slabs before casting concrete and after casting concrete. So, and before casting concrete, the research team uh, reinforced the slabs with top and bottom um, minimum reinforcement mats with number five rebars. And then uh, the second stage, uh, the research team conducted or make or formed. Um, a lumber fro uh, frames for the uh, the vertically uh, or vertical rebars. Those rebars are extended rebars from the slabs all the way to the UHBC or HCSC strips. Now, after everything was like, uh, make sure everything is good. The, the concrete has been uh, has been casted into the slabs, as you can see in the picture here and to the right. So the laboratory testing here in this picture, um, our rough surfaces have been formed uh, on the top of the concrete. Uh, that's to make sure uh, a, a good uh, bonding between the normal concrete and UHBCSC uh, strips uh, there. And uh, of the real or actual dimensions between the tested rebars uh, was as measured or uh, designed, it's, which is at eight inches, and the distance between the distance between the um, this sample and the new sample here is like 2.5 inches. Uh, all the dimensions are center to center. Now, what's next? Uh, <clears throat> the next work or the next level of the lab work is to cast the UHBC and HCSC strips for uh, all the design or all the specimens and specimen number design number four. Now, after making sure that all UHBC strips are cast and ready, the time-based pull-out test will be conducted to measure the connection strength 
as mentioned, like uh, 6 hours, 12, 18, 24, 36, 48 hours, 7 days, and 28 days. Now, the research team, um, um, the research team uh, expected like uh, to, to, to record or to get a time-dependent strength results from uh, four unique connection designs. Uh, the failure mode of the connection with respect to time will be will be analyzed and uh, and uh, observed. Uh, a guidance for engineers to allow vehicular traffic on the bridge with respect to time after connection completion will be provided, and that will make uh, the decisions about whether open the bridge or uh, just like extend that for additional loading will be easy to 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 take. Uh, I will stop here and uh, I'm, I'm ready to have, if you have any questions, I'm, I'm glad to hear. Uh, thank you very much, Abdullah. Very nice presentation. Um, just one question. Uh, so you mentioned that um, from phase one, we are familiar with, uh, I think Dr. Friesman went uh, to a, a project and they did the lateral slide or so. Is there going to be another field uh, process like a real uh, multi-span bridge doing it or the, the lab testing will be the uh, experiment? Yeah, Armin, this is Justin again. At, at this point, the DOT yes. does not have another project uh, planned, um, but that's not to say they, they aren't excited to use this technology where it, where it fits in the future. Um, from from our phase one, you know that that big question remaining was, you know, what the the limitations of that connection with respect to time were going to be, and uh, that that's just our laboratory focus currently. Uh, great, uh, as you said, uh, Dr. Dalberg is. Um, I know that Iowa State has been very active in uh, uh, implementing this project, especially the ones that you have been doing research with. So if that occasion comes up, uh, that that will be great really, to to include that also. Um, thank you. Uh, so uh, we are uh, at the end of our um, research day presentations. Um, before going to concluding remark, I want to pass the uh, uh, podium to Dr. Aziz Amini. He has few words to um, encourage you. <laughs> thank you. All right, thank you, Armin. Very, very good, very, very good presentation. Lots of good information. I just want to just take it one minute. I mean, first of all, thank everyone to uh, stay with Armin and us uh, for the entire program. Uh, please note that the deadline to submit the abstract is April 12. It's just the next Tuesday, and also note that. This time, in this conference, we are also going to be covering any topic, any advanced bridge technologies that affect all bridges, not just ABC, every bridges, uh, including the ABC. So if you have any um, innovative uh, idea or innovative uh, case or a, a bridge case, the case study that you feel like that your summary, your conclusions, uh, the lessons that you have learned that you would like to share with everyone that affect all bridges, all kind of construction time, please consider to submit the abstract, which is just the next uh, uh, Tuesday. So, uh, Armin, thanks. Thanks for giving me uh, one minute. It's back to you. Thank you very much, Dr. Aziz. That's really exciting. Uh, I mean, uh, there is Whoever comes to this conference and presents, especially on the innovation and technology, new technologies, um, uh, it's targeting two targets with one arrow because uh, the ABC UTC conference and uh, all the webinars, etc., has an extensive reach uh, in a community of engineers, uh, Department of Transportation. So that will go a long way if you can join the conference and um, uh, showcase your uh, research. Uh, thank you again, Dr. Azizi. So we will go 
with this, uh, really we are at the end of our research day. Uh, I want to thank again uh, all the presenters uh, um, and audience. Uh, and again, I'm emphasizing that if you heard or if you saw a topic and research that you are interested and you can collaborate in any way, uh, please contact Dr. Aziz Inamini, myself, or the PIs directly, and uh, we will make the best out of it. Uh, with this, and thank also with the entire team that helping me, uh, um, Ms. Jenkins and uh, Ali, Ali Javid, um, and everybody else. So we'll finish today with uh, um, a wish for a rest of the day, a good rest of the day, and good weekend upcoming. Thank you all.